Oi, how you doing everyone? My name is Norm, and at the time of you watching this video, I am officially 20 years old. And considering the fact that the average human lifespan is around, around 80 years, that means that I am officially one-fourth or 25% done with my life. I don't have to wait much longer now. But with this very special occasion, I decided I'm going to make a video where I show off the evolution of Norm, i.e. from my birth in 1999 to me talking right now. I hope you enjoy this journey. Yeah, that, that was the original plan. I'm 22 now. I'm starting to realize I have a very serious procrastination problem. But either way though, better late than never, right? So, let's go. Let's go. God, please. Not Russia, or Poland, or Ukraine, or just Eastern Europe in general. Hello, sir. Where am I? I to knock you. Bibi, that do I'm going back in. No, the Bibi, I will tell you to Indian. I was born at a very young age on November 18th, 1999 in a beautiful, cultural, and exotic country called Lithuania. And just like every post-Soviet child, I was a chronic alcoholic ever since I was a child. Nah, I'm just kidding. I wasn't an alcoholic until I was about six. I was, however, an absolute bastard. I yelled and cried all the time, I wouldn't sleep at all unless if I was being constantly rocked in my carriage and even my grandma, after babysitting me, said I had three children and even all three of them weren't as much trouble as this one is. on the ground <laughs> Let's just say, I am my own reason for not wanting to have children. When I was a toddler, unlike most toddlers who learn to stand, walk, then run, I actually skipped the walking tutorial and, well... Back then I had two main hobbies. One of them was watching TV. I started out watching the Teletubbies. and then later started watching Cartoon Network. My second hobby was drawing. Here's a few examples of my work. I'm selling these as NFTs, bidding starts at $500 by the way. This is Forearms Heat Blast and Wild Mutt from Ben 10. 
This is Ed, Eddie, and Ed from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This is the demons in my head desperately yelling and begging to be released from their eternal prison. This is Robot Boy and Robot Girl from Robot Boy. And this is a self-portrait. <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern and I'm not sure I like it. One thing that got my fascination, even as a baby, however, is the- yeah, Norb, don't do it, man. You're gonna end up as a shitty video maker, don't do it. Pick up another hobby while you still can, man, like eating sand or something. My family never really let me film anything though because they were scared I would break the camera, which is pretty understandable. Yeah, I was still a piece of shit. This didn't exactly change much when I started growing up. Eventually, my uncle, who is a technomancer, oh, got us our first PC. And this PC was actually really good and could run most modern games with no issues. Well, games that were considered modern at the time, that is. My family knew about this, but they didn't know that video games have storylines or sequels and stuff. They thought that games were just haha, gun go boom boom. So some games I played were mostly sequels to other popular games. Instead of Deus Ex, I played Deus Ex Invisible War. Instead of Doom, I played Doom 3. Instead of Carmageddon, I played Carmageddon 2 Carpocalypse Now. Instead of Quake, I played Quake 3 Arena. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Hey! Those games are violent and unsuitable for children! Get in my way! 
Well, yeah, they are violent and unsuitable for children. Anyway, then mobile phones started to become a more common and common thing, and oh, would you look at that! It has a camera! Videos and gaming? I'm starting to see another pattern that I don't think I like. Now, with everyone having a camera essentially in their pockets, I was able to make videos whenever I want. Either with a friend, or just by myself. <laughs> Oh, and remember those friends I mentioned? You are dead! <laughs> Wait a second, it's stuck. Right here. Yeah, well, I went from being an obnoxious bastard to a full-blown manipulator when I was a kid. Like, growing up, did y'all ever have that one kid in the neighborhood that was like, So, what do you guys want to do now? Let's play hide and seek. Uh, I don't know, man. We played hide and seek like four times already. How about this time we play tag instead? Tag? I don't want to play tag. Well, no one else wants to play hide and seek. Okay, okay, fine. You guys aren't my friends anymore. Screw you guys. I'm going. Okay, home. okay, fine. We'll play hide and seek. Ah, that's more like it. Yeah, well, I was that one kid that did that, and of course that wasn't enough. I also had to dictate everyone's friendships. If there were three of us, one person I liked and the other one I didn't, then they wouldn't be allowed to be friends. And if I accidentally saw them hanging out, I would throw a hissy fit and threaten both of them that they aren't allowed to be my friends. How, how the fuck did I have friends? Like, how the, how the fuck did I actually have friends in my childhood? I also notice some small remnants of this trait in myself nowadays, because I still get kind of pissy when I see my favorite content creators doing collabs with someone I, I don't like, like, like Dream or something. Of course, though. All good things must come to an end. And all good things came to an end when I had to start attending school. Now, if it wasn't painfully obvious by pretty much all of my tweets, I don't like school. Okay, well, elementary school wasn't that bad because no one took it seriously. Close enough. C+. Plus. Okay, we didn't have the American alphabet system. In elementary, we simply had A, which is the highest grade, P, which is basically... Not great, not terrible. Then there's M, which means you got the minimal grade, and there's NM, which basically means you didn't even get the minimal grade. And whenever I used to get this grade, I was like, Hmm, I must have done so well on this test that they decided to grade it after my initials. Wowie! I'm so smart! You are stupid. As for my elementary school life itself, it was... Fine? I didn't enjoy it, of course, because it's school. But I would be lying if I said I didn't have its moments from time to time. For a start, I actually became pretty popular because I was one of the only kids in school that could speak near fluent English. I would be walking around the hallways and suddenly, Hey! Chata spooky skuri smoka anglishke! Hey, pacane! Kaip anglishke bojuvis! Fish? <gasps> And yes, one of my nicknames in school was Fluffy, because I had long, poofy hair. My other nickname was Faggot. I was also really skinny back in elementary school, and I was also the shortest kid in my class. Back then, this was actually a good thing, because me and the tallest kid teamed up and formed an iconic duo. During recess, he would pick me up, say, you are now my mace, and start swinging me around the classroom usually hitting other students, and it was a blast! Until he decided to change it up and said, You are now my rocket, and threw me towards a girl I liked. Uh, hey, uh, my, uh, my friend over there kind of pushed me and... And speaking of crushes, how come I never got to sit next to the cute girls? Like listen, back in elementary school, we weren't allowed to pick our own seats. The teacher picked who we were sitting with. Okay. Thomas Angelo, you will sit next to Mary Rose. This evening's getting interesting. Daniel Garner, you will sit next to Hanoka. Fuck yeah. 
Hmm, I wonder who I'm gonna sit with. Norbert, you will sit next to that girl that looks like Jabba the Hutt. Uh, but sir, I think there's been a mistake. Shut the fuck up and stop disrupting my class. We also had dance classes. For some reason. And of course, it was the exact same. All the dudes were dancing with the cute kawaii girls. And meanwhile, I had to dance with a girl that looks like Jabba the Hutt. You know, I find this whole part pretty ironic because due to quarantine and the antidepressants I was taking, I ended up gaining a shit ton of weight, and now I look like a fucking sumo wrestler. Oh my god, you are so cute and funny. Down the line, I eventually got internet access. There's no need to go outside anymore. And with internet access comes new, shiny games. First of all, my cousin downloaded Steam on our computer and made me an account. He tried to name it Norbertas, but he couldn't because it was like Taken or some shit. So he named it N0 Urbertas. And that is where my username on every single website comes from. And of course, one of the first games I got was Gary's Mod. You're gonna suck this cup clean right now! Yes! But why I fucking hate video games? Because this is what it does. It appeals to, like the male fantasy. I also started watching YouTube, especially this one underrated YouTuber. You guys might have heard of him. His name is um, uh, PewDiePie. Well, badass, you little fucking what you? Yeah, you can tell where this is going. After a while of watching oh, PewDiePie, I found oh, out something. I found out he makes a living from playing games. But not only that, PewDiePie also makes a lot of money. He is in fact a millionaire. <laughs> and that was when I changed my lifetime goal. I mean, what could go wrong? I like games. I like videos. A secret undiscovered clues. It was a long climb up. Oh my god, a Bigfoot. Okay, get the hell out of here. And I like money. Mom! Dad! Dasanok! Что ты хочешь? When I grow up, I want to be a YouTuber and make millions of dollars. And I'm gonna take care of you guys and make sure you die happily under palm trees in Florida. <laughs> you serious? I'll show you! And that was the day my journey began. Hi guys, this is Norbert with another video of Gary's Mod. You might have, you must have seen my old one of error. Well, today, I'll oh, come on! Okay, well, I didn't actually start then. All I did was practice making videos. 
The reason why I didn't upload any was because I was young and I was a squeaker. And squeakers didn't have a very good reputation. Fucking retard, you made this! Hello? So I decided to wait until I finish hitting puberty and getting a deeper voice before I start making videos. Which was actually a wise choice and a bad choice. Because if I had started back then, I would have been the very first reaction YouTuber. Okay, which one now? Ooh! Farting cat! This one is here, this one is really funny. A farting cat. You'll see how much. Sorry. Editor's note, it's late AM. That's why I'm whispering. But, uh, I forgot to include this in the script as well as in the video, but I actually met most of my threat, most of my friends through Gary's mod. Some of them I'm still friends with even today. Fail! Ha ha! You try not to jump. That guy's head is like, is like one pixel like you did it. Just told your assignment was not to die. I tried, I was trying to shoot him in the head, but his head was like, was like two centimeters big. <laughs> yeah, that's about all I wanted to mention. Continuing on. Middle school though, is where everything started going to shit. Like, first of all, our house got robbed. Some family issues started happening that I don't want to get into, and also, it turned out I may have a, lear a learning disability because I couldn't concentrate. Like, I just can't force myself to concentrate. If my brain feels like it, it'll concentrate. If not, have fucking fun. Okay class, now listen carefully because what I'm about to say is very important. Blah 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 Probably one of the funnier examples of this is during a school play where we had to wear white shirts, but my dumbass must have not picked up on that, so I'm the only kid in a blue shirt during the school play. Of course, since we're no longer in elementary of course, since we're not in elementary school anymore, our grading system got changed. So, instead of A, P, M, and M, we had the traditional 1 to 10 system. 1 to 3 is a fail, 4 to 10 is a pass. 4 means you passed but just barely, 10 means you got the highest possible score, etc. You get the idea. Well, my dumbass was happy when I got a fucking 4. But it wasn't all bad. I also got the best gift of my entire life. You can probably guess what, or rather, who I got? Sparky. We adopted him when he was just a few months old. Now, he's 12. We grew up together. <laughs> Welcome to your death, mortal. Worthless human. This fight has only just begun. The most incredible thing is, despite being 12 years old, he still has the same energy and spirit that he did when he was a youngster. <laughs> and he looks like it too. You can barely tell the difference between these two pictures that were taken a decade apart. And he's also a genius. At an extremely early age, he started peeing and shitting in the human toilet without any type of training beforehand. He had a litter box, but he only went into the human toilet. This level of genius in a cat is like one in one million. Okay, back to bad stuff. I was also bullied. Heavily. As I mentioned, I was really skinny and also noticeably shorter than most kids. In elementary school, this was a good thing, but in middle school, it may be an easy target for bullies. I mean, what was I gonna do? Fight back? Most of the guys in my class looked like they were from a fucking Netflix show. Gym class was the worst, especially since teachers did that stupid thing where they made us form a line going from the tallest to shortest. Why, why, why would you do that? Just why? 
Are you trying to point out that I'm the shortest one? Competitions were especially the worst since I wasn't as good as the other kids. Y'all saw this coming, but I was always the last one to get picked for the team. Hmm. You. Hmm. You. Yeah. You with the face. I especially hated dodgeball. You know how when you get knocked out, you have to stand behind the enemy team, and when the ball lands near you, you have to throw it over the enemy team towards your team? Well, my noodle arms couldn't throw it that far, because the gym class was like two kilometers. So I would throw the ball, and it would land within the enemy's side. And of course, as if it wasn't enough, my classmates were also the types of people that take gym class seriously. <sighs> wow, that was one hell of a game, right guys? Shut up, moron. You skinny little prick. Uh, pathetic. As a result, I ended up being that one kid that wears hoodies in 25 degree weather. On multiple occasions while we were playing dodgeball indoors, I actually managed to climb up on a ladder and just stay there for the entire match. I did this multiple times and then no one even noticed. Well, I eventually got caught and the teacher wasn't very happy. <laughs> but it didn't last forever. Eventually I finished prison school, I mean middle school, and then high school came. Jesus fucking Christ, I've been doing this shit for eight years and I'm still nowhere near finished. First things first though, get a haircut, hippie. Uh, fuck, can, uh, can we go back? In high school, after going through bullying, I pretty much lost all my trust towards people, had no interest in socializing, making friends, and pretty much had the mentality of all friends are future enemies. So for the first two years of high school, I had zero friends. As a result, I spent all my time alone and already being in a stressful and depressing environment, I started to overthink everything, like life in general and stuff. So this is the conclusion of life that I had thought of. The first 12 years of your life, you have to go to school, which in itself is pretty much a 12 year prison sentence for no reason. Then you actually have to go to college or university or something, then just get a dead end job and force yourself to work for the rest of your life. But Norb, that's just life. Get over it. Shut the fuck up. What kind of fucking life is that? So I'm supposed to just work, 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 probably start abusing alcohol and drugs and die from an overdose by the time I'm 40? Meanwhile, there's celebrities and shit that make more money in one day than I ever will in my entire life by pretty much doing nothing? What do they have that I don't? I am better than everybody! Norb, your depression will get cured when you find a girlfriend! <laughs> yeah, good luck with that! 85% of all relationships end in breakups, and as many as 50% of mar marriages end in divorce. And that's just legal divorce. How many people fall out of love and start hating each other, but never officially get divorced? And besides, I don't even want to live in this country anymore. Just the atmosphere depresses me. What would be the point of getting a girlfriend or even friends here? I want to live somewhere else, like, I don't know, Canada or some shit. Finding someone here, finding someone here will just be pulling me back. But some people say it will get better in the future, and others say it's important to live your life in the present day. But the only thing that keeps me going is thinking about the future, although the future has no guarantee of being a good one. Moving to the West is a difficult and tedious process, and even if I'm eligible, and even if I am, I have no one there. I would arrive and I would just be lost on what I should do. Plus, there's military conscription in Lithuania. They could just take me away and make me join the army by force, but I don't want to join the army. I hate this country. I hate, I hate this country. And I was supposed to fight for it? I have to defend the, I have to defend the morons from Putin because of the shit that they said? I could try to find some girlfriend or some shit that lives in Canada or something through an online- <laughs> Oh, 
No, 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 no. I am fucking awesome. I am a god. I know so much stuff that nobody else knows. No one cares about it because they're stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. The world is a cruel and unjust place. Is it, is it fair that some people are born into wealthy families and shaped every day of their lives, meanwhile others are born into poverty in the country when they can't even live <clears throat> Sorry about that. I was trying to give a quick example, but I think I might have had a full fucking breakdown while trying to make the script. I mean, yeah, I tried going to psychologists and psychiatrists and stuff, but they always did the same thing. Pills here! Give me $200. I mean, they kinda sorta helped. It's hard to explain, but this is what pills did. <clears throat> oh, oh god, it's the demons in my head! Ooh! Hey there, demons. It's me. Yo boy. I tried most things that can help. Antidepressants, sunlight therapy, talking to psychologists, hypnotherapy. Nothing was helping. Could be in part that I didn't believe it'll help, but you can't force yourself to believe in something. Blah, 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 blah. Eventually, I just started asking myself a question. Shit, is this kind of life even worth living? You can even notice this in most of my pictures. In my earlier pictures, I would of course pose for the camera, do something goofy, make a silly pose or something. Watch your profanity. But when I enter my teenage years, you can just tell that I'm dead inside. There's nothing. <laughs> no goofiness, no silly pose, not even smi not even a smile. Just a dead stare at the camera. Oh man, this got dark quickly, didn't it? Oh yeah, speaking of teenage years, puberty. My face got a makeover with acne. I grew 0.8 centimeters taller. I found out that the human weenie has more than one purpose. And most importantly, I got tons of ass hit. My voice got deeper. I can finally start making YouTube videos. Also, yes, I used a registered bandy cam version to record a green screen of a bandy cam watermark. DJ Khaled, suffering from success. The day came. That day was October 22nd, 2015. I was sick, and had the next day off of school. Norb, now's the time. Go, pursue your passion. Make vid- Are those fucking minion Tic Tacs? <laughs> Cards Against Humanity? If I record it, that's more content for me. So of course I said yes, yes, okay. yes. Hmm, what's going on? I should have been rich and famous a minute ago. I need to make more videos. Deploy the let's plays. Hmm, I'm starting to feel like I should get a camera and a new microphone. This Cold War era microphone isn't doing me any favors. To the store! Perfect. It finally fucking happened! Yes! yes! I will be doing a Q&A. Oh, come on! Actually, now that you mention it, I don't have a YouTube girlfriend yet! Hmm, I wonder why that is. I physically felt my cooch just... super glue itself shut. It's never opening up again. It must be my hairstyle. Time to have an existential haircut crisis. <laughs> Golly gee, I've been making YouTube videos for two years now. Let's see how my channel is doing.
Why does nobody watch my videos? Yeah, YouTube wasn't exactly going too well at first, so let's focus more on high school. Oh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. This video is gonna focus more on high school. Did you really think I was gonna focus more on my school work? Okay, so when I transferred to high school after getting bullied, I had some serious fucking gym anxiety. Just listening to these sound effects gives me, gives me Vietnam flashbacks. One of my cousins went to the same high school before me, so he told me a little bit about the teachers. He said there's two gym teachers. One looks like every stereotypical gym teacher ever and allegedly was an alcoholic, and the other teacher thought he was training the next Olympics team. Guess which teacher I got? Surprisingly, I got the first one. He fortunately didn't force us to play dodgeball or any other things that I sucked at. Instead, he made us play basketball, which I actually didn't suck. I was balling. Although it was nowhere near as bad as middle school, there were still occasional hiccups. Uh, hey teacher, can we please have gym inside today? It's raining and it's cold. What? It's not cold at all, what are you talking about? Well, we managed to find an interesting loophole in the gym teacher system. Basically, the gym, the gym teacher doesn't mark attendance. Instead, he has a list of exercises that each student has to do per semester. So, of course, we exploited this loophole. And as a result of this exploitation, in the last year of high school, I attended gym class about... Uh, I don't know, like... Four times in the entire school year? Gym class wasn't the only lesson I exploited. The other exploitation was... Indirect. You know how when you get a list of lessons, you're typically supposed to get a classroom number so that you would actually know where the fuck to go to take those lessons? Well, I had that on all my lessons, but at some point... One of the lessons, called ethics or some shit, actually changed classrooms. But I was not made aware of this change. So me and my friend, who was also unaware of this, we would go to the old classroom, wait there for about 15 minutes, and go with the logic that if a teacher is 15 minutes late, we're legally allowed to leave. And so we did, each time. And the worst but funniest part is that I had not attended ethics class before, meaning that I wasn't even on the teacher's list of students. As a result, I never got any notes saying I didn't attend class. So it had actually never occurred to me that something was wrong. Eventually, me and the aforementioned friend were just walking around during lunch break, which was right before our scheduled ethics class, and by sheer coincidence, we saw a classroom with an open door and saw our ethics teacher getting ready for class. So at that moment, we had realized that class had been happening the whole time, and we hadn't attended it for uh, a few months, maybe? So yeah, we were kind of scared, especially since the teacher wasn't like most teachers. Most other male teachers in the school just looked like middle-aged men in suits that no one really gave a shit about. Well, this guy, he was bald, had a beard, and would always wear a tucked-in shirt to assert that he's more fit than you. And if that wasn't enough, during break time, he would always sit around in his classroom playing heavy metal on the school computer. So yeah, safe to say, this kind of guy was intimidating, but we had to do it if we actually want to graduate, so we went in, and probably the best interaction in the school's history happened. Hello teacher, my name is Norbert, I'm one of your students, sorry for not attending class for about uh, uh, a few months, I didn't know where the lesson was happening. The teacher responded by saying, and I'm quoting this, are you disabled? <laughs> Don't worry, Norb. 2018 is almost here, and it's gonna be the year of the Norb. Also, just FYI, I already made a video highlighting the significant events of 2018, so this is gonna be a kind of a TLDR version of that. So, let's start where most things do. That's, That's right, right, the penis. No, no, no. Reddit. Okay, a lot of people say Reddit is the cesspool of the internet, but it's actually not that bad. 
Twitter's worse. Anyway, I went on Reddit once, found the Offlight TV subreddit, and was like, hmm, there seems to be no sign of high effort memes. Most of the stuff here is just clips, pictures, and shit like that. Why are there so few actual memes? It's not even difficult to make. You just take a green screen of Max Mofo, put it over a lip biting compilation, and oh, oh god, oh, what's happening? Oh, lol, oh god, oh, 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 oh. Huh. So that just happened. Very poggers. Of course, I continued making memes. And somehow, along the way, I spiraled into making skits of myself, uploading them to the offline TV subreddit. Nowadays, I look back at them and I. I, I cringe. <laughs> I have no idea how most other people seem to like them. I was pretty fucking happy. It's like my childhood dream came true. I have an audience. Albeit it was only on Reddit. Or was it? Ah, the weekend of February 24th to 25th. Fuck. Ah, the weekend of February 24th to 25th. During the weekend, I actually wasn't home most of the time because I was visiting my aunt. But in the meantime, people from the offline TV subreddit managed to stumble across my YouTube channel. And, well, I'ma just let past Norb explain it to all of you. Holy dingleberries! 300 subscribers! Already? Less than a week ago, I had 70! That means that in this weekend, I got about 200 plus subscribers. Holy actual shit! Thank you very much, Past Norb. That's a nice zit you have on your nose, by the way. And this is where things got fun. <gasps> oh my god, is it Norbertus? This is my new thumbnail. I'm gonna be in the video? I just got like 50 follows! Ah, yes. Ride memes. Life good. This was also an eye-opening opportunity for me to see who my real friends are. Beforehand, I was part of a Skype group. Yes, we used Skype back then. And let's just say... I was the one that everyone liked the least. I can't imagine why. Like, they literally had a secondary group where it's just everyone else except me. And they didn't even try to hide it. And of course, everyone also enjoyed ripping on me for pretty much anything. Whether it be my appearance, my hair, my YouTube channel... Listen here, you little shit. You can make fun of me. You can make fun of my hair. But if you make fun of my passion and hopes and dreams, then I'm gonna shoot a bitch. Eventually, I got tired of being shit on, so I left the group around late 2017. Of course, no one gave a shit at first. In fact, they probably celebrated. But when they saw my YouTube channel suddenly... de, de couple in size? I suddenly started getting messages of like, Hey, buddy, it's been a while. How you been? <laughs> Same thing happened at school. I know I mentioned I didn't have any friends during the first two years of high school. But during the last two years, I managed to make a few. They weren't close friends, but it was better than sitting alone during lunch. And of course, when people saw that my YouTube channel gained a fair few subs... Hey, Norb, we've been friends for so long! <laughs> uh, listen, can I get a shout-out on your YouTube channel? Firstly, you don't even have anything to promote? Say my name. Secondly, I'm graduating in a few months. I'm probably never gonna see you again. I didn't even need these kinds of friends anymore since I had a new group of friends from the offline TV fan base, especially in Kimmy's Discord. And compared to my old friends group, these people were actually kind. Holy fucking shit! My friends went from this to this. Hashtag get no blade. And speaking of me getting laid. Now, I was gonna include screenshots of people talking and joking about me getting laid, but the fucking Discord server broke and it wouldn't show any messages when I was editing the video. So sadly, you're all just gonna have to take my word for it. Spoiler alert, I didn't actually get laid. But anyway though, 
A lot of the people I met were actually really kind, and a lot of them were starting to convince me to go to TwitchCon, which was in San Jose at the time. I actually wanted to go to TwitchCon and other conventions before, it's just that I never had neither the reason nor the funds to go. This time was different. Oh my fucking god, 50 euros! 50 euros? 50! You better fucking strip for them, Norv. Holy shit, okay. I fucking will. Hold on, I'm taking off no, my freaking no, sweater. No, don't. The original fake, thank you so much. This is for you. God, you did this for giving me 15 euros. I'm naked right now. No, I'm not. No. Take that, mom and dad. Y'all said I would never make money from content creation. Oh, and while we're at it, mom, dad, I want to go to San Jose. No, I don't want you to go to Brazil. What? Brazil? No, San Jose is in America. Oh. That's even worse! My parents were understandably a little bit apprehensive about letting their 18-year-old son go to the other side of the fucking world completely alone. Especially since I had basically next to no travel experience. Hell, I'd only been on a plane trip once when I went to Turkey with my mother. And even then, the entire trip was organized by our travel company. We didn't have to do shit ourselves. This would of course be very different. I'd have to organize my own flights, deal with layovers, get a US ESTA, book my own hotel, get TwitchCon tickets, learn how to navigate an airport, try not to accidentally fly to Australia. But fortunately, a lifesaver came just in time. And his name was Scarcrow. Started as a viewer that became a friend and he offered for me to come to Gamescom, which was in Cologne, Germany. Scarcrow lived in Cologne, so he let me crash at his place for the time being and even offered to pick me up from the airport. Again, is this what kindness is? So since inter-European travel is cheap as fuck, I figured, why not? So I packed some stuff and went over to Germany. Cologne was pretty damn nice, and Scarcrow was a wonderful host. While at his place, I actually got introduced to a proper gaming setup, and we even streamed from it for a bit. Why does he bounce back? He bounced the other direction! I hate this game! I hate this game! After having fun, I came home, and my family was surprised I didn't get human trafficked. But most importantly, I had actual travel experience now. But I was still far from being prepared though. Traveling within Europe and traveling to the other side of the fucking world are two very different things. Then, another savior came in. His name was Isaac, and he offered to be my travel buddy. He even ordered our Airbnb for us ahead of time, and said paying him back was no rush and I can do it whenever. Again, why is every single person outside of Lithuania so fucking kind? <laughs> So to the absolute horror of my parents, I decided to go to San Jose anyway, and oh boy am I glad I did, because TwitchCon 2018 was unironically the best time of my life. Which gun. Sometimes I still look back at the footage of me in the airport bathroom and think, this dude has no idea he's about to have the best time of his life. Also, here's a small horror story. It was my first time staying in an Airbnb, so I was in the bathroom and I was taking a shit. Our Airbnb had lots of rooms, so there were other people staying there that we didn't know. So one of these people tries to go into the same bathroom I'm in. The bathroom had a lock on it. So I didn't pay much attention when the guy started trying to open the door. But to my absolute horror, I realized the lock doesn't work. So, when I realized the door is opening, out of panic, I started yelling. The guy stops trying to open the door, but he doesn't close it. He just leaves it half open and walks away. Who the fuck does that? So I had to stand up, waddle over to the door, close it, waddle back to the toilet, hoping that a piece of shit doesn't fall out of my asshole and stay on the floor, and sit back down on the toilet. TwitchCon itself was pretty epic though. I met e-celebs, friends, meetups, 
I got recognized by people, uh, somehow, partied, won a race on a bouncy castle, experienced the local cuisine. It was euphoric. I was actually high on life. Although the trip back was shit, because my airline suddenly decided to do a change of reservation, which basically means my flight home was now taking off, not from San Jose, but from San Francisco. Almost 50 fucking kilometers away. So I had the last minute Uber all the way to fucking San Francisco to just to get home. And it wasn't just me who suffered. Isaac, the guy I traveled with, had, had his flight actually cancelled and he was stuck in England for an entire day. And actually missed one of his exams because of it. Yeah, Lufthansa loses social credit points for this one. Overall though, TwitchCon was one hell of an experience. My family kept telling me not to go, but afterwards, they told me they're actually glad I didn't listen to them and went anyway. I rate this experience a solid 2,841,268,465,749 out of 10. Well, I only had to sell my home, but at least I went to TwitchCon 2018. Hey, guess what? TwitchCon is coming to Europe this year. It's gonna happen in Berlin, Germany. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me I spent all my life savings to go to North America for TwitchCon and now it's coming to Berlin, Germany? Yeah, pretty much. Deutschland is my heart in flames. Will I live and for damn Deutschland is my heart in flames. TwitchCon Berlin was less noteworthy, but still fun though. This was the first ever time TwitchCon was outside of the U.S. Again, since inter-European travel is basically taxi fare, I figured I may as well go. A dude named Fritz agreed to let us crash at his place for the time being. Okay, y'all already know what I'm gonna say, I'm just, I'm just gonna skip it. Originally, there was supposed to be five of us, but there ended up being only three of us. One dude just dipped out of nowhere, and the other one was underage, and we later found out that TwitchCon Berlin was 18+. Thanks, German laws. The con itself was pretty good for the first TwitchCon in Europe, although it had some very obvious downgrades. Like, first of all, there's no after party. How am I supposed to get my drink on? I'll be honest, guys. In TwitchCon San Jose, I actually broke the law. I drank at the age of 18. Anyway, back to Berlin. The second downgrade is, obviously, that there was only two days instead of three. This was a kneecap, if I'm being honest. At the American TwitchCon, on day two, you feel like, Oh man, the con just started, I'm having so much fun, and even more is gonna happen tomorrow. Meanwhile, when there's only two days, it feels like the con just started, and it's almost over already. It didn't exactly help when me and the boys went to McDonald's to get some food, but ended up missing a meetup because of it. One thing I will mention though, there was like 5 of us, and I remember that 4 out of 5 people were German. I was the only non-German, and can I just say how fucking annoying it is when everyone starts having a conversation in German around you, and you just sit there cause you can't participate? Like, come on guys, even the Vorticons in Half-Life 2 were more polite. The free man must excuse us. It is rude of us to commune by flux shifting in front of those whose vortal inputs are in bad. Yes. We will vocalize in your auditory language as a matter of courtesy. Anyway though, I was sad when we missed the meetup and the rest got cancelled because it was too cold. I packed extra food for the second day just to make sure that we don't have to leave the convention center. But there were no meetups. And nothing too noteworthy even happened. Well, apart from this beautiful picture getting taken. And me getting proposed to. To sum it up, TwitchCon Europe was definitely fun, and I'm glad that Twitch actually cared about people outside of the states. But it was noticeably lacking though. My personal experience, 
I'd rate it a 7.5 out of 10. TwitchCon 2019 was in San Diego, and it was... fine? Okay, if I'm being real, TwitchCon 2019 was the TwitchCon that I did not enjoy. I will preface this by saying, I 100% did this to myself. As I said, TwitchCon 2018 was the best time of my life, so I was over here expecting it to essentially be the best time of my life 2.0, which, of course, it wasn't. San Diego was a really nice city to explore, and the hostel we stayed at was great for the price. They even had air fresheners in the toilets, so you don't have to just sit there and inhale your own shit. Low price luxury. The convention itself, it wasn't anything special. Of course, we met up with people, met up with friends, streamers, but of course, things weren't the same. Most of the people I watched blew up between 2018 and 19, and a lot more people came to the meetups, which means there was no more time and space to do a casual meetup anymore. They all automatically turned into meet and greets, which basically means you just go say hi, take a picture, and leave. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault, it just kinda happens. The after party was especially disappointing since you had to pay extra for it that year. In 2018, you could go to the party for free if you're attending TwitchCon, but this year, you had to pay 30 extra bucks because FAMOUS musicians were performing. When I looked at the list, I legit had no idea who any of them were. Well, I know Lil Nas X because his Twitter is funny, but he never even showed up. So I was paying 30 bucks for a concert that I couldn't give less of a fuck about. I legit left halfway through the concert because I got bored. I was more entertained by some random pigeon that got lost in the arena than the main performers. For me, it truly was a downgrade compared to, compared to 2018, where I had to leave because it was getting late and everyone else was getting tired and leaving as well. When TwitchCon ended and I was going home, I was honestly in shock. TC 2018 was the best time of my entire life, meanwhile this one didn't even fully satisfy me all that much. Sadly, I rated it a 6 out of 10. It was aight, but I don't know who was worth the price of traveling across the world for it. Lesson learned, don't have high expectations. Twenty twenty started out all right. My longtime friend Gustav invited me over to Sweden for Narcon, which was actually pretty fun. I cosplayed as Anarchist Five MBO from CS:GO, but I didn't really like the fact that we had to sleep in a crowded room in sleeping bags because it felt like a concentration camp. Other than that, though, it was it was actually pretty fun. Your boy Gustavo was a fantastic host. I flew back home and what's this? A man in Wuhan, China tried to become Batman by eating a bat, but instead of becoming Batman, he caused a global pandemic, which caused the entire world to go into pause mode? I'm gonna be honest, I secretly enjoyed the quarantine, because of multiple reasons. It was a good opportunity for a mental break, college got cancelled, and we had to take online classes, which I skipped. We had to do exams online, which I cheated on, and some people are gonna hate me for this, but I was secretly a little glad TwitchCon got cancelled. I was bummed out because I had already planned out my trip to Amsterdam and I was planning on getting high as a kite, but the pandemic caused the con and pretty much my whole trip to get cancelled. I remember I was on the toilet when I saw the TwitchCon Europe got cancelled, and after I had already bought a hotel, flight tickets and everything, I immediately jumped off the toilet, wiped my ass, and ran off to the computer to cancel all my plans and try to get a refund. I got refunded most of my money, but in the end I still lost about 150 euros. But Norb, you said you were happy about the cancellation. You don't seem very happy. Indeed, I was bummed out because TwitchCon Europe got cancelled. But TwitchCon in the States though, firstly, it was in the exact same place as it was last time, San Diego, so I wouldn't be seeing anything new. And I was still pretty disappointed over TwitchCon 2019, so, so I was debating if I should go even. I was in what people call the TwitchCon curse, which means I went to a few TwitchCons and now I have to go to all of them. Because if I don't, I'm going to be depressed. But if I do go, then I risk being disappointed and broke. In the beginning. In the... In the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. In the... In, in it was kind of a lose-lose situation. So when fucking God himself said, No, you're not going. No one is. I was kind of like, Alright. Because knowing an event didn't happen is less depressing than knowing that it did happen and that just you didn't attend it. Fucking hell, this is why I didn't have any friends as a kid. For the most part, nothing else really happens. I mean, in 2021, I graduated college and now I have a piece of paper. I spent years of my life trying to get. Bro, I'm out here, I'm out here graduating and it started to fucking rain like hell. At least I finally have a use for my diploma now. TwitchCon recently got announced again. It's gonna happen in 2022. Am I gonna go? 
uh, I don't know. The Amsterdam one, probably because it's right fucking there. The US one, I'm not sure. I lost all my passion for streams and even most things content creation wise. In case that isn't obvious by my atrocious YouTube upload schedule. Other than that though, nothing else is going on.